believe in aliens? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm getting my hair cut by one right now. <laughs> it's making me look like a, what is it, Robin Williams? What year is it? What year is it? Oh my God. All right, so I got Caleb here today and uh, we're gonna be doing a haircut and beard trim on him. What can I do for you as far as the hair? What do you want to do today? I know it's pretty short on top, so you're yeah. going for the buzz kind of summer thing right now. Yep, yep. Cool. Do you want to go shorter than what it is, or do you want to maintain this length that you have? I go a little short. I got like a just a five up top before. Okay. And then I did like no guard on the side. Okay. Uh, do you want to go all the way skin like trimmer, or do you want to do just just no guard on the on the clipper? Just no guard on the clipper. Right, yeah. That's cool. Like a I don't know mid fade to that. Let's do it. Yeah. And then. Uh, so as far as the beard, I know you were saying that you still want to keep like some girth to it and mm -hmm. like make it like, you know, still girth. pretty full. <laughs> Art knows about girth. <laughs> um, so pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just bring it in just a bit. You know what I mean? Just yeah. get rid of these flyaways right here and like the things that are kind of coming out. Just shape it. It'll make it look a lot more fuller, but we won't compromise the length or anything like that. Clean up the cheek lines, taper it into the fade. And then as far as the mustache, do you like for it to kind of hang over the lip how it does? Or yeah. do you want that cleaned up a bit? I like it, like it's just kind of long. Like it kind of rips so all the, the edges, way out. It's a little bit long right yeah, there. Yeah, so just take like, I don't know, half an inch off that. But I do like kind of being able to pull it out and you know, cool. put so some I'll Frenchify probably, it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna taper it into the beard then. Like we'll just kind of trim it up just so it goes a little bit more smoothly in there and it's not gonna be so like disconnected over it. Um, and then I may just like touch that just a bit, but like no lip line or anything like that. Yeah. Sweet. Let's, Let's go. Let's get to it. Phew. And we're just blending all this in right now, working my way up to that five. Yeah, I think partially was I don't know how to like use my words appropriately. <laughs> so I probably just he didn't. just told me the wrong haircut yeah, to I was give just, you. I just, because you, you probably said like blend. I was like, I don't know what that means. So I just said, all right, there's a 50-50 chance you can either say yes or no. And I went no. <laughs> and then I just fucking ended up in Narnia for both of us. And so. that was at a time when I would like I said, I was so new to cutting hair that like whatever the client said, even if I knew the right thing to do, I was so worried about like, oh, well this is, I, I was doing exactly what they told me to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Compared to doing what I professionally knew what to do. And so, you know, finally I gathered up enough strength and uh, confidence to be like, no, I think we need to do it this way and start, you know, telling clients that or whatever. But I remember just being so nervous at, the, at that time. I was like, what does he want me to do to his hair? But I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, whatever you want. It's good to find your thing. It's almost kind of rad that you found it later too. I talked to my dad who he knew he was going to be an architect since he was 17, right? So now he's been doing that for, I don't know, he's like 170 years old, so <laughs> doing it forever. But I think there's something to finding your calling later in life. I don't yeah. know, it kind of gives you a renewed purpose and a little a fire under your ass a little bit. No, for sure. I definitely knew like this was one of those things that I was like, I think I was... 31 or 32 when I started getting into bar, or when I got into barber school, 30 or 31, something like that. And, uh, you know, it was one of those things where, like, I knew the, the risks of, like, starting something over in life as far as, like, not having a lot of time to waste. And I told myself, like, you know, this, this has to work pretty much. So, yeah. you know, and I know, like, you know, I was uh, pretty gifted at it to pick it up in such a short amount of time. But, it, you know, it took a lot of hard work and discipline. Like, I put in a lot of hours, like, staying after work late and you know taking clients once the shop would close so i would be able to get those reps in and cut hair yeah. like in barber school it's kind of you know first come first serve and if you're not up there doing what you're supposed to be doing like you might not cut heads all day so you know i definitely wasn't getting the reps in in barber school that i needed to so it came with a lot of like just sacrifice and stuff like that you know outside of work and and putting in the hours but it's just like anything else you know what i'm saying yeah, reps. I mean, yeah. reps are. Like, I mean, like that's like the. As two quasi meatheads, reps is like the one thing that we definitely understand and. It's foundational, man. You know, if you want an outcome, there's, there's got to have action, and that goes for anything in life. So. Which is something you know I wish I would have known sooner, but I'm also very uh, grateful and happy for my path and where I've ended up. So you know, it's all it's all part of at least you know my story and stuff. You believe in aliens? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm getting my hair cut by one right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> I do occasionally think, and this is like dead sober, this is when I'm high or fucked up or anything like that. Like when I'm dead sober, I'll wake up and I'll see situations out in the world. Like there's no way this isn't a simulation. Like someone is pulling the strings for sure. I knew we were friends for a reason. Yep. Well, if you have a lot of people, when they're having conversations, especially if you're in like a contentious one, like a debate or anything, you're not, instead of listening, you're just waiting to talk. And so if you're just waiting to talk, you're not actually hearing the other side. So I try to make an effort, especially if I'm in an argument with some dumb dumb <laughs> to be diplomatic. I'll make sure to listen to every word they say. A, because, well, I'm kind of a dick and I want to use it against them. But B, mm -hmm. if they do say something that makes sense, I want to be able to kind of digest that. Yeah, and take it in. I agree. And if they say they don't believe in aliens or dimensions, I'm going to slip psilocybin in their tea and I'm going to make them see God. <laughs> so... All right, Ari Shafir. No. Oh, oh. He can dose people with Molly. That affects your heart rate. I'm just, I just want them to see more colors. Yeah, like I just want you to be nicer. That's it. Yeah. I just want you to be warmer. I want you to be able to feel the color turquoise. I was going to get real dark with that joke before that, but... Send it. I was going to say, all right, Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. <laughs> It's like all I watch right now on TikTok is jujitsu videos hmm. and Theo Vaughn and Bobby Lee there, videos. Theo Vaughn. <laughs> he had one bit that had me rolling for like eight hours every time I thought about it. I, forget, I think he was interviewing Caleb Presley, mm -hmm. the, the barstool guy. And he was saying, he goes, man, we had this friend growing up, right? He had no teeth, he kept them in his pocket. So when we asked him to smile, he just pulled out his teeth out of his pocket and showed them to us. <laughs> For some reason, I giggled all day long. I was on calls, <laughs> people were like, why are you so happy? I'm like, well, I'm allowed to be happy, but it's just Theo. That's how, uh, that's how Bobby Lee is for me right now. I got him, that guy is crazy. He's out of his like, mind. He, uh, just the way he laughs with Andrew Santino and mm -hmm. shit like that, like them cackling together just Man. makes me cackle all day long. So. I it's weird. I love the way that Mr. Cheeto Santino calls him Bob. He goes, Bob, are you a child? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to get started on this beer. So I'm just going to wet it just a little bit because I want to blow dry it and just kind of just get these kinks out of here. I tried to get all the food out of it, but there's some sweet potatoes fall out. I think there's one little ramen noodle no, in there I'll somewhere. No, I'll take it. <laughs> all the carbs I can get. I've been making my own like fermented and pickled veggies lately. Mm -hmm. We're just getting real domestic right now. We went from aliens to fermented vegetables in about seven minutes. <laughs> That's what we do, man. It's the Beard Brand Podcast. That's what's up. Because um, I realize if I eat like raw veggies like that, I can't really handle it. But if they're like fermented or cooked, Mm -hmm. yeah, you up. can talk. I can talk. Um, Just me pulling on your mustache right yeah. there, but you can talk. I'm used to it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll go in and just get a bunch of mason jars and make a bunch of veggies, and I end up saving 100 bucks a month that I used to spend at Whole Foods with all these expensive <laughs> kimchi and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, my, I think uh, my favorite thing right now is pickled vegetables, man. Mm -hmm. Like pickled onions and cucumbers and shit like that. Dude. Pickled uh, watermelon rind is the truth. Really? Yo. That sounds good. It's fire. You basically shave it off and you leave just a little bit of the meat on there mm -hmm. and then the rind and you cut it into spears. They're actually really good on like, I don't know, I, I just either Leave them in spears, I'll chop them up and put them on tacos as like a relish kind of thing. Yeah. It's dope. Are you washing your beard every day or what's your routine like? Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm probably bad about that. I just throw in the same <laughs> put on my head, so I just head and shoulders it, which <laughs> might be blasphemy right now. I'm sorry. Um, well, we're going to get you hooked up today, all right? I like that, yeah. We're going to get you some product for the beard, for the hair, separate, you know what I mean? I don't have to use dish soap anymore for yeah, my beard. Bro, no more Blue Dawn. Yeah. 
Why should it be the secret? Why Chesapeake have been doing it wrong yeah. and then just Blue Dawn is the secret to having a grizzly beard? Just gonna open up some Tide Pods and put it in. Man, I end up looking like Same, I bro. took DMT before I trimmed my <laughs> it. Same here. I, uh, that's why I leave mine to Cisco. There's certain things I can do on my own, but same thing. Like, I don't, this other side of my face, like, I don't really, like, you got to work backwards in the mirror. You know, everything's up is down, down is up, left is right. So it's a little complicated. And you once, you know, once you take a chunk out of the beard that makes everything else uneven, you either keep whacking away at it or you get rid of the beard. And yeah. then you got to regrow it. I'm normally good about whacking away at things, but, like, the beard <laughs> is just not... Not one of those things. Just let me whack it, all right? I appreciate it. <laughs> and I mean, you can already just see, like, from the two different profiles, like, definitely a lot more jawline there, a lot more slimmer. And we're just gonna match it up with the other side, but it's still a very nice full beard. And I always have this weird cowlick on the left, too, that kind of. I see it. Yeah. In this area right here, over here too. I mean, that's the thing is like, you know, beards are just like the head. There's going to be, um, you know, calyx and veins, swirls and, you know, lighter spots, sometimes darker spots. And, uh, you know, it's just like creating an illusion. Like to me, like no beard is the exact length all the way around. You know what I mean? Because yeah. sometimes you got to leave a swirl a little bit longer on the right side than on the left side in order to kind of give the illusion of it like matching up and looking you know the same so you know i always like to say i learned this uh from somebody that i uh, learned under when i was an apprentice is like you know they're related they're not they're not twins or cousins you know what i mean so it's like you, you can kind of tell like the the resemblance in them but they're still going to be a little different no two sides are the exact same and then we're just gonna keep on shaping, guys. Now we get to see a whole nother layer of the beard underneath. But like I said, we're not gonna go too short under there either to make things push out, but you know, we want like a smooth silhouette all the way through. So I'm just barely just tapping this back here, cleaning that up just a bit. Tap it in, just tapping it in. Pretty much just following that first guideline that I put in. You know, this is one of those instances on a beard where I like to say like, less is more. When you create that super clean shit, like a lot of that doesn't look good in three days, you know what I mean? So, but you know, it all, it all, like I said, it all comes from the reps, man. And just like, I've done that to people where I've given them the super clean beard with like the fucking super straight lines and, you know, the fat Joe beard pretty much, I guess yeah. you could say. That's what I like to call it. And um, that wasn't what they wanted, you know what I mean? And I, I kept trying to make things look super clean, but sometimes the subtle, just like really soft and just, manicured kind of looks work a lot better so but like i said just really just soft soft is what i look for and i just want things to just have a nice silhouette and shape i'm just gonna do a few finishing touches and then get you out of here brother get you hooked up with some product too so I'm just gonna comb everything out and I just wanna look and just make sure there isn't any crazy like, you know, unevenness that I see or anything like that. Bro, you're full blown Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz right now. I'm f***ing drop Nate right now. <laughs> Hermie Nate? Just kidding, just don't come to Austin. But...